So welcome to Transform Our World, New Orleans. This is um, a topic tonight that we're covering. It's called, what economic system are you on? The kingdom or are you on the world system? So what economic system are you on? The kingdom or the world system? Let me pull up our, our screen here. There we go. Listen, today is a time where there's a shaking going on on a lot of different levels. Elvis had a song called there's a whole lot of shaking going on. And uh, I think that might have been <laughs> a prophetic message at, at this time. If you, if you really look at the different structures, our political structure is being shaken. Our economic structure is being shaken. Our medical structure is being shaken. Our city literally has been shaken uh, with uh, Hurricane Ida. There's a lot of shaking going on, but we don't have to fear because we have an unshakable foundation. And I really wanted to encourage you all to know that whatever's happening economically, I want you and I to be secure in whatever's happening, that it doesn't matter what's happening in the world system. As long as we stay faithful to the kingdom system, we're going to be fine. That we'll, that Jesus said that the house that's built on rock will stand. It doesn't matter if the winds blow, the rain comes, it's shaking. What was he talking about? He was talking about having your foundation on him, on the kingdom, on kingdom ways. And it doesn't matter what happens. You will stand firm. So that applies in all our areas. That applies in health, that applies in economics, that applies in relationships, that applies in every area of our life. But tonight we're going to look at the economic system and the difference between the kingdom and capitalism. You know, um, there's two systems that are playing out it's at the same time. The two economic systems, one is the kingdom of God and the other is the world system. And we happen to live in a system that's called what? Capitalism. There's other world systems like communism, socialism. All these are different systems that we have. And yet, anybody. Let's see, who's that? We got to make sure. We meet with. Yeah, so there's, there's these different systems that are man's system. And they may have bits and pieces of truth in them as an economic system that line up with the kingdom. But overall, they are not a kingdom system. So I want to look at some of the differences between the two systems this evening before we get into our scripture. One is the kingdom system is based on the Bible. The Old Testament, the New Testament, Jesus taught so many parables about finances and business. In fact, he probably discussed that topic more than any other topic in his parables. And he lays out a system of how we're supposed to handle finances very clearly. And we need to search it out. We need to study it. But there's a whole system, systemic approach that we have Capitalism is a world system, and it's based on man's wisdom or man's philosophy. The kingdom system is rooted in, and I think Mama Kelly said it earlier in her prayer, that giving ignites prosperity. It's in the act of giving at God's direction that 
ignites prosperity. It's when when the, the young boy gave his five loaves and two fishes to Jesus and gave it to him that ignited the multiplication that fed the 5,000. It was the widow that gave her last flower to the man of God, Elijah, and it ignited the, the, the prosperity of her to be taken care of. In the world system is based on the philosophy of what? Taking as much as you can. And if you take more than you give, then that's what's called a profit, and then you can accumulate. That's the fundamental tenet of capitalism, is to bring in more than you give, and it creates a margin, which the capitalists would call profit. The kingdom system is based on obedience to God's command. Obedience is the key. In capitalism, is following the strategy, I say of mammon, because Jesus refers to uh, mammon as the world system or man system, is following whatever the strategy is of mammon, of communism, of socialism, of capitalism. The kingdom economic system, God is my source. <clears throat> God is my security. God is the one who is the provider of all things. He may use channels. He may use companies, businesses, people, wisdom, power to get the source to us or resource to us. But we ultimately know as a kingdom person that God is the source. In capitalism, my job may be my source or my business if I own a business or the number that I have in my bank account or the amount of stocks that I have, that becomes my source. <clears throat> and it's a lower level source that is unpredictable because it could be here today <clears throat> and gone tomorrow or like what's happening today, we have inflation, we have struggles in the stock market, uh, our, our retirement accounts may be at one level one day and it may be down the next day. And if my attachment, or that is my source, then that becomes very, very disorienting or becomes a shaking at a core level if my source stops there. In the kingdom, Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God, make that first, and then all these things, finances, houses, clothing, resource, will be added on to you. So in the kingdom, I need to seek the kingdom first, and God will make sure resources track me down. Where in capitalism, of the world system, you seek first profit <clears throat> at all cost. Is that wonderful proverb that says, The blessing of the Lord makes you rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. That when we seek God, the kingdom first, and then he puts his hand of blessing upon us. And when his hand of blessing comes upon us, then we begin to prosper. But because we're seeking him first, we have balance in all areas and there's no sorrow added to it. But oftentimes in the world system, I seek first profit, work. It gets out of balance. I go after that and then my relationship suffers, my hobbies suffer, my social life suffers, my connection to God may suffer, and it adds lots of sorrow with it. Look, these are two economic systems that are functioning at the same time. 
And one, as I said, is doing it God's way. And the second is doing it the world's way. I want to look at a story that Leon even alluded to in his prayer, which he tends to do when we are, when he's praying without knowing what's coming up. And we're going to look at a story of Isaac and the famine. But I want to define what a famine is first. A famine is a scarcity of food or other resources for a specific geographical location. It's a scarcity of food or other resources for a particular geographical location. So that could be a location such as Louisiana, or it could be the United States, or it could be a country like Canada, or it could be uh, North Africa, a specific location where there is a scarcity of food or resources. Now, a famine can be caused by a natural disaster. It can be caused by some type of crisis or it can be caused by some type of calamity. Or secondly, a famine can be caused by a governmental response to a disaster or to a crisis or to a calamity. Sometimes there's a crisis, but there's also an unhealthy governmental response. And because of that governmental response or rulers that lead to a further disaster crisis and calamity. Now, some examples, and these are more extreme examples from the 20th century include in China, they had a Chinese famine between 1959 and 1961, which amazingly resulted, extraordinary, into 15 to 30 million deaths. It's just unbelievable. Uh, more recent times was the Ethiopian famine in 1984 to 85, which caused approximately 1 million deaths, but affected more than 8 million people. And even more recent than that, North Korea had a famine roughly 1995 to 99, which killed an estimated 2.5 million people. So we've had famines in the last 100 years that were horrible. And those are really extreme where there's just no... Uh, provision and resources and people literally starve to death, get sick and so forth. Now we haven't seen anything like that here in the United States because we're a very prosperous country. But at the same time, you know, periodically we have, we have these economic crises that in our own eyes, they're, they're famines, but they're really mild famines compared to some of these other examples. But there's a cycle that gets into process. And there's some principles that God teaches us about how to handle famine. And we're looking at this story by Isaac and the famine. Genesis 26, chapter 1, it starts. Now there was a famine in the land. Say famine. And Isaac went to Gerar to Abimelech, king of the Philistines. Isaac was Abraham's son. And the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, listen what the Lord says. Now, just a little history. When Abraham experienced a famine, he went down to Egypt where there was provision, and that's where he helped save his family. So Isaac obviously had heard the story of this, but there was a famine in this land in Gerar, and listen what the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell you. Sojourn or dwell in this land. So look what he says. 
There's a famine in this land, and I'm instructing you, Isaac, not to go to Egypt where you can get provision, but I want you to stay right here in this land of famine, and I want you to dwell right here with your family, with your extended family. And listen what he says, sojourn in this land, and I will be with you and will bless you. <laughs> You're going to bless me, Lord, in this land of famine? Yes, I will be with you and I will bless you. For to you and to your offspring, I will give all these lands and I will establish the oath that I swore to Abraham, your father. I will multiply your offspring, sounds like increase right there, as the stars of heaven, and will give to your offspring all these lands. And in your offspring, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. I will bless you so that you can be a blessing to all the nations of the earth. And listen to the because. Look carefully. Because Abraham did what? Abraham obeyed my voice. Go ahead and say that out loud where you are. Obeyed my voice. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws, so Isaac settled in Gerar. I want you to see what God values most when it comes to taking care of us financially, taking care of our families, taking care of our provision, taking care of our prosperity is obedience. And when you do what I tell you to do, my promise to you, Scott, my promise to you, Rhonda, is that I will be with you and I will bless you and I will give you these lands and I will establish the oath. I will multiply you and I will make you a blessing so that you will become a blessing to others. So it says Isaac settled in Gerar. A little further down, Genesis 26, 12, listen what Isaac did. And Isaac sowed in the land of famine. Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Only God can provide increase in a land that was suffering from famine. Only God could feed 5,000 from five loaves and two fishes. Only God can provide a coin to pay your tax for a year inside of a fish's mouth. Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in that same year a hundredfold. And look what it says. The Lord, what? Blessed him. And the man became rich. Who's he talking about? Isaac. Why did Isaac become rich? Because he was being blessed by the Lord. Why did the Lord bless him? Because he obeyed the Lord's command. And the man became rich and gained more and more until he became very wealthy. Now, sometimes as as believers, we get uncomfortable with the very wealthy part. But this is a result of living under his blessing. And then he describes how he became wealthy. He said he had possessions of flocks and herds and many servants so that the Philistines envied him. And Abimelech said to Isaac, go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. 
Go away from us. You're embarrassing us. You're living under the blessing. We're living in this famine. And we don't know what to do. You're making us look bad. But can't you see that God can bless you regardless of the economic state of your country? God can bless you regardless of what your bank account says, or regardless of what your salary is, or regardless of what's happening. He says, Leon, just obey me. And as you obey me, I will put you under my blessing. And these things will come to you. So Isaac departed from there and encamped in the Valley of Gerar and settled there. It's an extraordinary story. They don't want to stir up your faith so that you can stand strong in this time of economic shaking. And know that because you love the Lord and because you obey the Lord, that you are living under the blessing. We are the seed of Abraham. And we're living under the blessing, as Paul says in Galatians, under the blessing of Abraham because we are Abraham's seed through Christ. So Isaac in the famine, here's a couple of points I want you to see. Protection for Isaac and prosperity during a famine is released by what? Obedience to the voice of God. Logic would have said, go down to Egypt where there's food and where there's provision. But God said, no, Isaac, stay in the land of famine. And that's where I'm going to protect you. And that's where I'm going to prosper you even during the time of a famine. Number two, faith in the promise of God is greater than any calamity in the natural and will release divine provision and blessing. Stir up your faith tonight in his promise that because you're seeking first his kingdom all will be added on to you. All your wants. David said it like this, the Lord is my shepherd and all my wants are taken care of. I shall not want. I obey the voice of the shepherd and because of that, he takes care of all my wants and I have no wants. Stir up your faith and know that he's a good father. And he's not only healer, he's provider. He's not only deliverer, he's prosperer. Number three, sow, work, and labor in the place that God appoints, and the Lord will make you flourish when all else is failing. Whatever he tells you to do, obey it. And the promise is you will flourish even when all else is failing around you. Two psalm, two uh, scriptures that I love. One, one is from Job along these lines in Job 5. Listen what he says. The Holy Spirit says through Job. In famine, Moses, he will redeem you from death and in war from the power of the sword. At destruction and famine, you shall laugh and you shall not fear the beasts of the earth. In famine, even in time of famine, you will be redeemed. You will be protected. You will be bought back. You will not die. And in fact, you can laugh at the famine. And you shall not fear. 
Look what the psalmist wrote in Psalm 37. The Lord knows the days of the blameless and their heritage will remain forever. The heritage is your inheritance. They are not put to shame in evil times. And here's the good news. In the days of famine, they have abundance. Go ahead and say that. In the days of famine, I have abundance. Say it again. In the days of famine, I have abundance. Hold on to the promise. It's by releasing our faith holding on to the promise that he gives us, and we hold on to these truths, and he begins to release it in our lives. <laughs> so let's look at our activation. First question is, what economic system are you on? Are you on the kingdom economic system, or are you on capitalism? Second question, are you being obedient to where the Lord wants you to live and the type of work he's calling you to do? Just check with the Lord. Are you being obedient to where the Lord wants you to live and the type of work he's calling you to do? You say yes to that. And you can rest assured that you're living under his blessing. Number three, on a scale of one to 10, one being no faith, 10 being high, high, high faith. On a scale of one to 10, what is your faith level that the Lord will take care of you and will prosper you during a time of economic downturn. If your faith is a two, let's get it to four. If your faith is a five, let's get it to seven. If your faith is an eight, let's get it to 10. On a scale one to 10, what is your faith level that the Lord will take care of you and will prosper you during a time of economic downturn. Let's stir up your faith. Let's encourage your heart. Know that he's with you. He will prosper you, that you're living under his blessing and that good things will come and that the Lord will do signs and wonders just for you. Amen and amen. So let's just take a second. If you'd like to give this evening, you can uh, you can give to, I put activation, it should be giving. Uh, Venmo, y'all know this, but uh, if you want to give Venmo, it's Voice of the Kingdom. Uh, PayPal, it's Voice of the Kingdom, dash New Orleans. Or you can go to the website, voiceofthekingdom.org, and there's a, a donate button. And uh, we just bless any given that you do tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.